Chapter Aroth Although Eugene had set out to find Jolid immediately, he couldn't just barge straight into Jolid's office. While casually exchanging greetings with the main family's servants, Eugene sent through a request to meet with Jolid. Before long, the head butler arrived to personally escort Eugene to Jolid's office. You should really think it over before deciding, Shane attempted to persuade Eugene. I've already given this matter a lot of thought before coming to my decision, said Eugene. Cheyenne took a deep breath and swallowed his protests. Now that he thought about it, it was ridiculous that he was trying to hold on to Eugene and prevent him from leaving. If that monster were to turn his hand towards learning magic, wouldn't that mean his training in the martial arts would slow down? That would actually be better for me, Cheyenne realized. Although Eugene's progress might be ahead of his for the moment, Cheyenne would also rise to the third star within the next few years, so Cheyenne decided to see Eugene's departure as more of an opportunity. Of course, Cheyenne had no intention of being satisfied with just reaching the third star of the White Flame formula. He hoped to have somehow reached the fourth star by the time he became an adult. But can I really? Truthfully speaking, he had his doubts, in the history of the Lionheart clan. There wasn't a single person who had ever managed to reach the fourth star of the White Flame formula while in their teens. Even the family ancestors who had made a name for themselves as geniuses, and even Jolid and Jen, had all been stalled at the third star before they had become adults. In other words, just being able to rise to the third star of the White Flame formula at this age was enough for him to be compared to his genius predecessors, however. Such thoughts merely filled Cheyenne's mouth with a bitter taste. Eugene and Cheyenne were both currently seventeen, but today, Eugene had already risen to the third star of the White Flame formula. That was an unprecedented speed of advancement. It wasn't like this was the first time that that monstrous child had left his mark in the history of the direct line, but... Cheyenne gave a heavy sigh as he turned to stare at Eugene's back. Eugene was currently in the middle of waiting for a reply from the other side of the door before he could enter Jellyd's office. I too, Shane forced himself to swallow another sigh that almost fell from his lips and faced forward once more. It had already been four years since Eugene had joined the main family. Since then, Shen had suffered countless defeats to this absurd brother of his, with whom he didn't even share a single drop of blood. These successive defeats had taught the young Cheyenne an unquestionable lesson. Despair is nothing but nourishment for further despair. Instead of spending any time in despair, shedding even a single drop of sweet in an effort to improve was far more useful. Shen clicked his tongue as he recalled an unpleasant memory. This wasn't a lesson that Cheyenne had managed to learn all by himself when he was still a child. The despair from his inability to defeat Eugene had led Cheyenne to hide in his room and cower beneath his blankets. However, Eugene had thrown open the door, barged into his room, and kicked Cheyenne in the ass. Do you really think that he'll just play around while you do shit like this? Even if Cheyenne was consumed by despair, Eugene would continue to train without taking even a single day off. As such, the difference between them would only continue to grow. After Cheyenne reminded himself of this lesson, he left Eugene to his own affairs and headed to the gymnasium. What are you doing here so early in the morning? Jelid welcomed Eugene into the room with a bright smile on his face. Instead of getting to the point immediately, Eugene first bowed his head and said, I have come because I have something that I would like to report to you. Report, Jelid asked, tilting his head to the side as his eyes gleamed with curiosity. He was curious about what kind of surprise his adopted son would be bringing him this time. As he sat down on the sofa Eugene began speaking, Just this morning, I reached the third star of the white flame formula. At these words, Jellied unconsciously leaped up from his seat. Is that true? He demanded, It can be hard to make great work when it's stolen from porid.com. Yes, sir, it is, admitted Eugene. Jellied rushed over with hurried strides. Meeting his unspoken request, Eugene began resonating the stars circling his heart. As white flames engulfed Eugene's body, Jellied took a deep breath in astonishment before bursting out laughing. Laughing. Ha ha ha. After taking in Eugene as his adopted son, Jellied had gone through so many different things that he had thought that he could no longer be surprised by anything. However, once again, Jellied couldn't help but be astonished. Was it really possible for him to reach the third star of the white flame formula at just 17 years of age? 
even among all his predecessors, no one had managed the third star at Eugene's young age. As Dolly plopped down on the seat in front of Eugene, he shook his head. Adopting you into the main family might just be the best thing that I have ever done, Jolly admitted. This is all thanks to the Patriot's support, Eugene replied with a faint smile. Although four years had passed since he'd been adopted, Eugene had yet to call Jolly's father. The only one he called father was his biological parent, Jehud. Jolly didn't feel any unpleasantness due to this. Instead, he approved of Eugene's filial piety to his biological father and was proud of how considerate his adopted son was. But if only such an impressive child was truly his son then no one would raise any objections to Eugene becoming their next Petrarch. On the contrary, everyone would actually be united under the opinion that Eugene should become the Petrarch. I shouldn't have such thoughts, Jolid attempted to discard this dangerous idea with a shake of his head. Such careless thoughts would lead to bloodshed and death, for the clan, and of course, his family as well. Jolid didn't want to force his children to have to bear their knives at each other. After he finished casting off such thoughts, Jolid continued. My support, you say. I don't believe that I gave you anything too impressive, so this achievement is all the result of your hard work. But it was all thanks to the Patriot's support that I was able to work so hard, Eugene argued. After carefully examining Eugene's smiling face, Jolid burst out laughing. It looks like there's something you need, he observed. Without any hesitation, Eugene confessed, I want to learn magic. In the past, he had had to pay attention to maintaining his childish facade while speaking to Jolid. But now there was no longer any need for that. Eugene had grown up quite a bit and Jolid had gotten used to Eugene's forthrightness over the past four years. Magic? Jolid asked. Despite all this, Jolid wouldn't find it so easy to grant Eugene's current desire as he would any other request. The confusion that Jolid initially felt was the same as Cyan's. Why did Eugene suddenly want to learn magic? After all, Eugene had never once expressed any desire to learn magic during these past four years. Are you serious when you say this? I asked Jolid. Yes, sir, Eugene confirmed. But why? No one from our family's entire line was able to reach the third star of the white flame formula at your age. If you continue to work as hard as you have been, you might be able to rise to the fourth star before you become an adult. I'll still be able to train hard even while I'm learning magic, Eugene stated without any uncertainty. Although this might seem arrogant, in Eugene's opinion, Someone like him had the right to say such a thing, Sir Petrarch. In the four years since I was adopted into the main family, I have never once left your care, Eugene said as he straightened his back and faced Dolid firmly. Today, as I was advancing to the third star, I realized something. If I continue to stay at the main estate and keep practicing as I have been, I don't believe that I will continue to show the same amount of growth. Whom Dolid hummed in consideration. I am extremely lacking in real-life experience, Eugene concluded, although Eugene's voice was calm as he said this, Jolid felt a surging vitality coming from these words that matched Eugene's young age. Eugene's voice was full of his sincerity and desire for growth. Eugene confidently continued his argument, I want to learn much more, especially about magic. While it is something that I have never studied before, I know that it is also a discipline that uses manner. Although I don't yet know if I have any great talent for magic, I believe that by venturing into magic, it'll be able to view mana from a different perspective than the one I've had until now. Jolid stayed silent. Even if I don't make much progress in it just by learning a new discipline, I believe that it will still be a great experience for me. I am sure that all of this won't be in vain. That is why I have dared to make such a request. Eugene stopped talking at this point and stared at Gelid with sparkling eyes. Then, he placed his hands on his knees and bowed his head low. I sincerely beseech you. Hey, Gelid let out another laugh then. As he shook his head from side to side, he continued speaking, raise your head. Do you really think that there is any need for you to bow your head just for a small request like this? Yes, Patriarch. Even if I am your patriarch, how can I pour cold water on your burning desire to learn and grow? Eugene, I understand what you're trying to say, 
So if you really want to learn magic, then he'll just have to give you my permission to learn. Eugene shook his bowed head in relief and smiled, of course, when he raised his head, there was no trace of amusement left on his face. So then, how exactly do you want to go about learning magic? Jellied asked. That's, Eugene trailed off. Since you've already come to ask for my permission, you must have thought it through already. No, I want to go to Aroth. Although Jalid had expected this, he couldn't hide his uneasy reaction when Eugene mentioned the magic kingdom of Aroth. If you wanted to learn magic, then Aroth was definitely the best place to go, and if it wasn't for what his eldest son, Award, had experienced in Aroth, Jalid wouldn't have felt any discomfort. From these words, Aroth, you say, Jalid murmured, I don't need anything else, just your permission, Eugene continued speaking quickly. From here on, Eugene knew that he needed to be careful with his words. Award was Jalid's soft spot. Even though he was the eldest son, Award hadn't made any outstanding achievements in the martial arts, and despite showing interest in magic ever since he was young, the eldest son had failed to show much progress in magic as well. Although he had stayed in Aroth ever since he was sent there four years ago, Award hadn't been able to escape the heavy weight of the Lionheart clan's prestigious name and instead had been made into a laughing stock for having only managed to enter the tower through his connections. Eugene didn't want to get involved with Award. He only wanted to go to Aroth to learn magic and follow any clues left behind by Sayana. However, if the word Aroth was spoken anywhere in the main estate, whoever heard it instantly thought of Award so he needed to be very careful, as Eugene didn't want to create any pointless misunderstandings. Jalid eventually shook off his unease and said, If that's what you want, then I can only give you permission to go there. Allow me to inform Lovelyan first, though. Although I'm grateful for your thoughts, I don't want to receive too much in terms of support. Eugene paused for a moment to examine Jalid's expression before continuing. To be honest it feels like any assistance would be very burdensome, and Master Lovellian should be quite busy as well, if possible. I would like to try studying quietly on my own without any assistance from Master Lovellian. That would actually be quite difficult, Jelid said, unable to stop a wry smile forming on his face. Even if you leave the main estate you are still a member of the Lionheart clan. The moment you arrive in Aroth, many of Aroth's wizards will be paying attention to you. Even if you refuse it, a lot of people will approach you to make connections to the Lionheart clan. Then I just won't accept their offers, Eugene said determinedly. Your convictions are praiseworthy, Jalid complimented with a sigh. How good would it be if his eldest son could be like that? As dangerous thoughts rose up in his head once more, Jalid shook his head to clear it. Eugene, just promise me one thing, Jalid requested. What is it? Eugene asked. Do not get involved with black magic, in a rough. There was a black tower of magic where black wizards gathered. There weren't any disturbing rumors that matched their sinister reputation, and unlike in the distant past, the public. Opinion of them wasn't too bad, however. The Lionheart clan had been founded by the Great Vomoth. Although some of the collateral branches had chosen to specialize in magic, black magic was still forbidden to the clan as an unwritten rule. I also despise black magic, Eugene replied without any hesitation. Jalid nodded in relief and said, As long as you can promise me that I won't lift a finger so you'll be free to leave for Aroth in whichever way you desire. I won't even inform Lovellian. I hope you won't have to personally experience the same sorts of troubles that Eward did. Is there anything else you would like to request? I would like to shamelessly ask for an allowance. How long do you plan on staying in Aroth? I'll need to go there first and start studying to get a rough idea of how long it will take me, but I don't think he'll be returning before becoming an adult. That means you intend on staying for at least a few years. Well, that's the only way he'll be able to actually learn something, Eugene confirmed with a laugh. Hmm, that certainly seems true, however. Since magic is a completely different discipline from what you've been taught so far it will be impossible for you to make any progress if you go into this half-heartedly Jalid warned Eugene, he had never learned any magic in his past life, as such. Even Eugene didn't have the confidence to say that he would be able to make rapid progress. Finishing his conversation with Jalid, Eugene left the room, as he walked back down the hallway, he heard a knocking sound coming from a tightly locked door. 
What is it? Yi Jing asked without any alarm as he halted in his steps. He knew whose room that was. It was one of the rooms Sile was using, ever since she had started going through a rough patch of puberty a few months ago, she had stopped going to the gym, and instead used some of the rooms in the mansion for her own training, are you really going to a rough soul didn't open the door fully and instead let her voice leak from a crack in the doorway, did Cyan tell you that? Ejin asked, Mem, he also told me that you've reached the third star of the white flame formula. So you've already heard everything then, I asked if you're really going to Aroth, yep, I've even got permission from the Patriarch, why are you even going, ah, she said this so knocked on the door once more, once more, knock knock, Eugene smiled and responded with a few knocks of his own, because I want to learn magic, he explained, if that's the case you don't really need to go to Aroth, you can just invite a wizard from the capital to be your teacher, argued Sail. Don't you know that they won't be as good as the wizards of Aroth? If you request it, father would even summon a wizard from the royal court. But I don't believe that a court wizard would be better at teaching than a wizard from one of Aroth's towers of magic. The court wizards are guaranteed to be skillful. What I want isn't a skillful wizard, but a wizard who is good at teaching, Eugene patiently explained. Do you really need to learn magic? Soil asked, her voice growing petulant. She opened the door slightly and let her head poke out of the room. At seventeen years old, Soil was left with very little of her past mischievous look, but the change was only skin deep. Eugene was well aware of just how cunning this girl's true personality could be. Soil once again insisted, You don't really need to learn magic, right? But there's also nothing wrong with learning magic, is there? Eugene argued back. If it's magic you want, then isn't your spirit magic enough? Also, while you aren't here, brother, and I might be able to catch up to your skill level. Sile was blatantly provoking him, but Eugene just snickered in amusement. If that happens, that's actually good for me, Eugene smirked. What's so good about it? Won't that just mean that the main family is growing stronger, and that it will be more fun sparring with you too? Oh, although it has been quite a while since I sparred with you. If I start sparring with you from now on, will you stay here instead of going to Aroth? No. I will still be going. Bastard Sale insulted him with a pout on her face before pulling her head back into her room. Until just now, Sile had been immersed in her training, so her hair was frizzy, and her body was damp with sweat. She didn't want to show such an appearance to anyone, nor did she want anyone to notice her body odor. After a short silence, Sil continued speaking. How long will you be gone? Won't know until I get there, answered Eugene casually. You should know roughly how long it will take. It will be a year at the very least. Why do you want to stay for so long? Moving out will be a pain. And what will you do about Miller, Jihad? It might be because they were twins. But Sile had ended up saying the same thing as Sion. My father will be just fine without me, Eugene pointed out. Uncle Jin will be lonely, Sile eventually said after some hesitation. That might be true. Eugene also happened to enjoy his frequent spars with Jin. To make up for me not being here, you both should make sure to play with him, teased Eugene. And what about my brother? Seul suddenly brought up Shein. Why bring up Shein here? What I mean is that my brother enjoys sparring with you as well. If he really does enjoy getting beaten up by me, your brother has to be a little strange in the head. In any case, his brother will be lonely if you're not around. Earlier, while he was talking to me, he even secretly confessed that he didn't want you to go, but I plan on going anyway. I would also prefer it if you didn't go, like I said, I'm still going, you son of a bitch. Behind the door, Sile's face twisted into a frown, in the main family, Eugene was the only one who would allow Sile's words to wash over him without any reaction, Sile popped her head out just to glare at him before slamming the door shut with a loud bang. When are you leaving? Seal's muffled voice came through the door. Eugene answered, tomorrow. Why are you leaving so quickly? Is there any reason for me to delay it, since I've received Gelid's permission? I should just save time and head off right away. Rude jerk, shouldn't we at least have a farewell party? Why would you want to throw a farewell party for a jerk? Knocking on the door again as a goodbye, Eugene resumed walking down the corridor. Only after Eugene had gotten some distance away did Sile open the door once more. Are you really leaving tomorrow? As this voice came from behind him, 
Yi Jing just waved his hand as a response without turning back to look at Sile. Since he had obtained Gelid's approval, Yi Jing showed no hesitation in his subsequent actions. After returning to the annex, he knocked on Jehud's door, come back safely, although he had been suddenly informed that Yi Jing would be leaving for Oroth tomorrow. Jehud didn't spend much time thinking about it before giving his blessing, it wasn't like he didn't have any concerns for his son, but Jehud also didn't want to suppress his son's freedom after Yi Jing had already grown so splendidly. Jehud lectured his son, while you're there, don't hang around with naughty kids and make sure not to neglect your lessons. Yi Jing returned the favor, even when I'm not here, don't do anything you shouldn't do, father. And don't neglect your exercise either. Jehud burst into laughter at this rejoinder. Jehud had greatly improved himself during his past four years at the main estate. He had lost a lot of weight and even gained quite a bit of muscle. It was all thanks to his regular hunting trips with the collateral patriots and frequent walks he enjoyed in the main family's extensive forest. Also, if anyone tries to cause you trouble because I'm not here, write to me right away. Don't pointlessly suffer in silence on your own, Eugene insisted. Jehud tried to reassure his son. I'm sure that the patriarch will be able to spare the attention if I bring the matter to him. Still, wouldn't you feel better if it was your one and only son who was looking out for you instead of the busy patriarch? Jehud smiled silently and patted Eugene on the shoulder. This gifted son of his was Jehud's pride and treasure. If it wasn't for his son, Jehud nodded his head as he recalled his memories of Jedal, where they had been living just a few years ago. Jehud tried to soothe Eugene's protectiveness. I just don't want to be a hindrance to you. What hindrance? Don't say things like that anymore. I have never once thought of you as a hindrance, Eugene responded bluntly while poking Jehud in the side. In any case, I'll be leaving tomorrow. I'll make sure to stay healthy while I'm gone, so you should also make sure to stay safe, father. Got that? Fine. Fine. I've got it. Eugene was now taller than Jehud. Jehud smiled happily while looking up at his son, who had grown so mature. That night, Eugene and Jehud, as well as all the members of the main family, gathered together and sat around a large table. Even Sile, who hadn't shown her face at dinner in quite some time, was now sitting at the table wearing a nice dress. Although it wasn't a lavish farewell party, they had at least managed to wrangle something into place so that the whole family could offer Eugene blessings for the future as he prepared to leave them for a few years. Various well wishes were exchanged over a table laden with an array of luxurious dishes. So you intend to learn magic in Aroth, really? Since you have such an amazing talent in martial arts, I'm sure you will be good at learning magic as well. Hensel praised Eugene. The news of Eugene rising to the third star of the White Flame formula had made Ansela chew on her lip in frustration, but the fact that that monstrous child was leaving the main estate for the time being was a joyous consolation. I really envy Sir Jehud for having such a wonderful son, flattered Ansela. Harry, you're too kind, Jehud accepted the compliment with a laugh. During these four years, Ansela's attitude hadn't seen much change from when they had first met. She had no intention of forging a hostile relationship with Jehud, let alone Yijin, instead. She held out a hand with a smile, thus creating a friendly relationship with Jehud and Yijin. But Tanis, the first wife, showed the two a completely different attitude. The dark circles under Tanis' eyes and her sallow cheeks left a rather desolate impression. For the past few years, Tanis had rarely left the main family's mansion, and she spent her days reacting with great agitation to even the slightest mistakes from the servants, Tanis felt that she had no choice but to do so, and she felt like she was being driven further into a corner with each passing day. Award had not been able to become lovely and disciple as she had hoped, nor did he manage to forge any connections with Aroth's high-ranking wizards, since even Gilford and his wife, who had been friendly with Tanis, had left the main estate a few years ago. Tanis had no allies in the current main estate, although it's her fault for being so prickly. Avoiding Tanis' intense gaze, Eugene focused on cutting his meat. Jalid had never discriminated against Tanis. He didn't even force Iward to return despite all the negative rumors. Instead, Jalid kept providing support to shore up Iward's insufficiencies. It was Tanis' own decision to spend her days shunning any contact and clawing at her surroundings. Just as the meal was ending, Tanis suddenly called out, Eugene, Although Ansela treated Eugene warmly whenever they met, 
this was the first time the temperamental first wife had called Eugene by his name all year, though it wasn't like they had even held frequent conversations in the previous years, Tan is requested, once you get to Aruf, please take care of your older brother Huard. Eugene was unable to respond to these words that had suddenly been thrown at him and could only blink in surprise. Atanis continued he must have been lonely staying in Aroth all by himself for the past few years. I know that he didn't get to spend much time with you as siblings, but Uward is still your brother. Yes, men, Eugene eventually replied, you might be adopted but Uward is your brother, so please treat him like a younger brother should. Even as she said this, Tanis' eyes slid to the side. She continued speaking while glaring at Sion and Sile, who were sitting close to Eugene. Take care of your older brother, you can at least do that right. He'll do my best, Eugene avoided promising, oh my, you're being too insistent, big sister, I'm sure that Eugene will do what he can, Ansela gave a polite laugh as she drew Tanis' gaze away from Sion and Sile with these words, Tanis glared at Ansela with her narrowed eyes, then pushed her chair back and stood up, please excuse me, I'm feeling exhausted, I'll be leaving now to go and get some rest. You may be excused, Jalid nodded in permission with a perplexed look on his face. Over the past few years, Eugen had gotten quite close to Jalid. Thanks to this, he was able to make a fully informed decision about Jalid's position. Sure enough, the Patriarch's seat is a shit place to be stuck on. Read the most updated version of this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at porid.com. Eugen never wanted to become the Patriarch.